If you own one of these builders, you might be interested to know how well they perform. And today we are going to do this test and compare it to Gutenberg. This is part of my mission to find the fastest page builder on the market. And this is the conclusive video for me to get all the data I need. I've tested these page builders where I call them old school page builders. And I've tested these as well where I call them new school page builders. And if I would have known these page builders beforehand, I would have put WP Bakery, Nimble Builder, UX Builder in the category of old school and Zion Builder in the category of new school. But let's just call this test Gutenberg versus Assorted Page Builders. Now, out of those tests that I've done where I build an identical page like this on all page builders and tested them on Google PageSpeed Insights, Pingdom, and GT Metrics, the fastest page builder ranking at the top right now is Live Canvas, followed by Gutenberg, and then Bricks, and then Oxygen. And we're gonna do the same test in this video with the same conditions. We will still be installing those page builders on separate domains, but all the domains are hosted on the same server. We will not be installing any caching plugins and any external elements used on a page such as the images, the fonts, will be exactly the same. We will also give the best advantage to each of the page builders, which means these page builders will be installed on their own WordPress team or recommended team. And if they don't have any recommended team, we will install GeneratePress on each of them because GeneratePress is the fastest team I've tested. And then we will do the same two tests again. Number one is the bloat test where we will discover which page builder is the heaviest in terms of page size. To do the test, we will add a header and a button to a blank page and we will do the test on Pingdom and GT metrics. The second test is the most important one and it is going to be the same as the old school and the new school test we have conducted. We will use each page builder and recreate this page from scratch. The reason we are doing this test is because a normal web page will have elements. It doesn't only have a header and a button and you'll be surprised that the results between these two tests we are conducting will fetch completely different results. And that's why the second test is more important than the first bloat test. So the goal is to make this a fair, objective and transparent test. And that's why I will build each of the pages out from scratch right in front of you so you know there is nothing to hide. Once we are done with the pages, we'll be conducting 10 tests on these testing tools over a 12 hour period and we'll average the results. Now I spent a lot of time creating this video and it took like days from page creation to recording to analyzing, editing and many things in between and all because I feel it will benefit you in one way or the other. So if I can get a thumbs up from you, it will really make my day and make this all feel worthwhile. Now one more note before we get started. For Gutenberg, I will be using the data from the previous test just to make everything consistent. So don't be alarmed if you don't see Gutenberg in the picture. So let's get right into it. Now I've installed the respective page builders to these domains and as you can see, they are all different domains but they are all hosted on the same server. And since page builders such as Zion Builder, Nimble Builder and WP Bakery do not have any recommended team and they generally are compatible to any WordPress teams, I will use GeneratePress as the base team because it is the fastest and the most lightweight WordPress team that I've tested. And this is consistent with the previous two tests we have done. Now to show you that these domains are hosted on the same server, we will use a tool called whoishostingthis.com to run a test. As you can see, they are all from the same name servers and the IP addresses are the same as well. The web host I'm using is SiteGround. I'm embarking on a journey to discover the fastest and the most affordable web host, so I'm not recommending this at the moment. But if you wish to check SiteGround out, you can use this link. This is my affiliate link and I do make a small commission and you get the latest discounts as well, so it is a win-win. But anyway, now that you know all these domains are from the same server, Let's check what's behind the scene. As you can see, the only plugins that are installed on these domains are the respective page builders. For the UX builder, it is part of the Flatsum team, so no extra plugins is required. And let's check out the teams that are installed. So as you can see, other than the domain for UX Builder, where we have installed the Flatsum team, the rest are installed with the Generate Press team. So now let's create a new page and add a header and a button to it so that we can do a bloat test.
and let's put them through a bloat test. Now for the bloat test, we are only going to focus on the page size data given by the Pingdom 2 and the GT metrics. But just for interest, I'm going to do a Google PageSpeed Insights test with it. As you can see, I'm doing multiple tests on Google PageSpeed Insights because I want to eliminate or at least allow all the page builders to have almost the same reduced initial server response time because that audit will scale the results by a lot. And here we are. It seems that all these builders are performing well in the bloat test, the results are compatible with the results from the new school page builders, Nimble builders seem to perform the best out of the four, a fall short to live canvas and Gutenberg. But remember, this result is not conclusive because what's important is the performance of the page when it has elements, which we are going to test in a while, but let's go ahead with the pingdom test. Now, as we can see, the page builder with the smallest page size is still Live Canvas and Gutenberg. Zion Builder has taken over the third place, replacing Oxygen Builder. And Nimble Builder took over the fourth position, making Oxygen at the fifth position. Next, let's test these page builders on GT Matrix. Now, Live Canvas and Gutenberg are still holding their position strong, and the same that happened with the Pingdom test is happening here on the GT Matrix test as well. The Zion Builder and Nimble has pushed Oxygen and Bricks from their position. Anyway, as I said, the Bloat test is not the important test. It is good to know. And now, let's start building the page. We are going to build a page like this, and we are going to use the same images and content. This is consistent with the past two tests we have done. In the new and old school page builder test, we have also built the same page from scratch using each of the respective page builders. So we have come a long way on this test. Let's get on with the page building and as always, I will build the pages up right in front of you so you know there is nothing to hide. But I'm going to speed it up so you won't waste hours watching me build these pages. So let's go. Okay, let's talk about Zion Builder. The platform feels very robust, but it may be intimidating to a beginner. I just felt like it is very easy to get lost in the settings because there are too many layers within an element and each element has different settings. You really have to remember what you did every step of the page building process, otherwise chances are you will just delete the entire element and start all over again and that's what happened to me. For example, a simple spacer, at the front there is a width control, but when when you adjust that, nothing happens. You need to go to the styling tab and then select the wrapper, then select the size and spacing and adjust the width before the spacer will show. Well, I mean, it is all about getting familiar with the page builder, right? And I would say for any beginners who do not understand padding, margin and layers are going to face an uphill battle using this page builder. And another problem I face when using the Zion builder is that whatever that is shown on the builder doesn't really reflect on the live page. You have to guess where you did wrong. So overall, not a great builder for beginners, but that's just my opinion. This is based on my limited knowledge and experience on the builder. What's your opinion? Let me know in the comments. Now, when it comes to Nimble Builder, I struggle a little again because it has a completely different user interface. But I slowly got the hang of it and overall, I think it is quite an easy builder to use. But it does not have a lot of features such as the testimonial block and it is really tough to optimize the page for mobile experience. Plus, the templates are very basic. In general, it is a good builder for basic templates but if you want more advanced customization, it is lacking in that. Now for the UX Builder, it is probably the easiest to use out of the four I'm testing here. The layout is intuitive and you can easily grab the functionality. Overall, for ease of use for the UX Builder, I would give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. But the thing is, when it comes to customizing the button, I couldn't find a way to align it to the middle and I couldn't change the background color of the button. It has some default button color settings and that's basically it. But generally, I would still say it is easy to use. When it comes to WP Bakery, it is not very intuitive, honestly. It took some time for me to find out how to add an overlay to an image. I even tried finding answer on Google, but they directed me to installing another add-on plugin, which I am not willing to do. And it was almost towards the end of building the page that I discovered that an overlay was possible playing around with the row and column. Also, when I use the text block they have provided, they do not have an option for me to change the color of the text. I would probably need to use some CSS code 
because to change it. So I went ahead to use the custom heading instead for all the text. And the thing is, there is no easy way for me to add columns, which is very basic. I had to do some research on that and found the answer. It is a small little button with an icon that do not mean anything. So in general, WP Bakery is not very intuitive, but that's just my opinion based on the little time I have with the builder. Now that we've created the pages, let me wake up at 5am tomorrow to do the first test. So now it's 5am and this is the first test. I'm going to speed things up, otherwise I'll be wasting your time. But at the same time, I don't want to just skip the results because I want to show you what I've done to reach the final results. I want this test to be as transparent as it could be. If you just slow down a video, you can see every single move I make. Anyway, let me just reiterate how this test is conducted. We'll be conducting a total of 10 tests over a 12 hour period using Google PageSpeed Insights, Pingdom and GT Metrics because I felt that running three tests at the same period would not give an accurate result. I also believe that the performance will vary over a period of time and making an average out of the 10 tests will fetch a more accurate result. Now when it comes to weighing the importance of each testing platform, I would say that Google PageSpeed Insights carries the most weight. In the past, you can overlook the results from Google PageSpeed Insights but not anymore since the introduction of Web Core Vitals as a ranking factor. So the data from Google PageSpeed Insights will carry the most weight followed by Pingdom and then GT Metrics. Now in case you're wondering why I'm doing multiple analysis on a single Google PageSpeed Insights test, that's because I want all page builders to have similar results on the audit called reduce initial server response time because that audit will skew the rating by a lot. So I want to make it a fair test. I'm not trying to give any page builders an advantage because it really doesn't matter to me which comes first. The objective here is simple. I want to give you the most genuine and accurate results as to the fastest page builders. Whether it is Gutenberg coming first or not, I will gladly as accept the results. As you know, I'm a huge fan of Gutenberg and although I wish for it to turn up first, I'm not going to doctor any results. Anyway, Gutenberg has already lost its first place to live canvas and I have gracefully accepted the results. Now, after a couple of tests, I'm quite amazed by how well the Nimble Builder is performing on Google PageSpeed Insights. I have never expected this. The results are well in the 90s zone for almost every single test. But I was quite disappointed with Zion Builder because I thought it is a new school page builder but it's performing quite badly to be honest. I had high hopes for this builder and I thought it was one of the fastest builders touted by a lot of people. But it seems like it is not matching up to its reputation. I am really sorry to say it is, but this is based on the data I've collected, and all the page builders are tested on equal grounds. And so here we are, this is the last and final test. We have collected all the results we need. Now let's analyze them. Alright, I've consolidated the numbers and here it is. Let's review the results from GT Metrics. In terms of the fully loaded time, it seems that WP Bakery is performing the best, followed by UX Builder, then Gutenberg. As I said, I will not take much weight to the data provided by GT Metrics because as you can see, the page size and the number of requests should correspond to the fully loaded time. For example, the page size and number of requests for UX Builder and WP Bakery are much higher than the Nimble Builder yet they are running faster than Nimble. If you have analyzed the results from Google PageSpeed Insights and Pingdom as I did, you will know that WP Bakery and UX Builder should not be ranked at the top. I did the same GT metrics test with the old school and new school page builders and I found a lot of inconsistencies with the results from GT metrics. So based on that, we cannot determine the winner with this data. We gotta take a look at the data from Pingdom. Now I have to highlight something, because if you look at Nimble, which is ranked at the last position, it should have better results because if you look at the data from this test, you will see that it is performing the best in many tests. It was averaging 400 plus milliseconds but it screwed up at test 7 and 8, otherwise it would have been one of the fastest and be ranked at the top. But well, what can we do right? Results are results. Now with this test, Gutenberg is still standing strong at the first place. And Zion Builder actually got quite a good result on Pingdom and it is placed at the second position. I'm actually quite surprised by the results from UX Builder and WP Bakery because their results are quite close to the ones at the top. I thought they would perform much worse, but this has proven me wrong. But now here's the important thing. 
the one that carries the most weight is Google PageSpeed Insights. So even though a page builder performs very well in Pingdom, it might be dragged down if it didn't perform well in Google PageSpeed Insights. So let's check it out. Well, I'm really surprised that Nimble is coming up at second place. I'm not sure why nobody is talking about Nimble Builder. I heard a lot of people saying Zion is great, it is super fast, but based on this, it doesn't seem so. But anyway, have you heard of Nimble Builder? I think it is super underrated. My guess is that it doesn't have a lot of functionality as I've mentioned when I was building the page. But if you have heard of Nimble Builder or you are using it or you have used it before, can you let me know why nobody is talking about it? I'm really interested to know why nobody is talking about such a fast builder. Anyway, this ranking is purely based on the Google PageSpeed Insights test. And if I factor in all that I've seen in Pingdom and GT metrics, it would look like this. The Nimble Builder will keep its position because generally it is a fast builder. It is just that it screwed up two tests in Pingdom and the results from Google PageSpeed Insights has tightly sealed its position. It is way ahead from the other page builders. Now I've pushed Zion up one position because I saw that Zion is performing much better than WP Bakery in the Pingdom test and that the results between Zion Builder and WP Bakery are very close. So I think the adjustment is justified. There we have it, Gutenberg is still at the top. I'm very happy to see this. This gives me so much confidence in using Gutenberg and I was really surprised that Nimble Builder comes up second. It's performing so well on Google PageSpeed Insights. Honestly, I think Nimble Builder is an underrated page builder. More people should be looking into this. I know it's not as complex as Elementor or Oxygen, but it is a very fast builder. I'm actually quite disappointed with the results from Zion Builder. I thought it should have at least gotten a 90 plus rating on Google PageSpeed Insights with such a simple page, but unfortunately, it didn't. Now I've done Gutenberg versus old school page builders versus new school page builders versus all these page builders I've found and I've gathered a lot of data. I will be consolidating everything and I will do a video on the fastest page builders. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do it now and hit the bell notification so we won't miss that video that is coming up next on the channel. All the best to you. I hope I provided enough valuable information to render a thumbs up from you. If you have done that, you are awesome. Take care and stay safe.